What's up YouTube, Demi here. We're gonna do another build guide showcase character thingy. Um, this is for a CI based, or a regen based CI tank, which I have turned into a Casman Damage setup. Casman Damage Taken setup. Um, it's supposed to be modeled after Dynas, the Firestorm tank dude from a while back, but yeah. We'll start with the um, pros and cons, I guess. Pros of the build, you are incredibly tanky, you have insane resistances, you're overcapped on two of them, you can possibly get more if you want, you have a huge amount of regen per second, more once you get your enchants and stuff to proc. Uh, your CI, so you're immune to chaos, and it's a pretty fun build. Like, it's very strong in PvE AI, because you can just run around and tank basically everything, I use this as my trial runner. Like, if a trial pops up in a map, I can literally walk through all of them, because they don't kill me, none of them can. Um, if you like walking around, letting things hit you, and then they die for that, it's pretty fun. It's pretty good in PvP as well, a lot of people don't know how to handle it. Because, like, you're just supposed to hit the other person, right? So you hit me, and then you get hit by a bunch of other spells and curses, and you take away too much damage, and then you die. The cons of the build, you're really slow. Most because I don't move speed on my boots. Um, you don't have a movement skill unless you drop some damage, cast some damage taken setups to get a movement skill. You are weak to burst damage, specifically burst physical damage, but high enough burst elemental damage will kill you as well. But yeah, those are pros and cons. Let's start with the um, ascendancies. If I can remember the button. P. Okay. So for my ascendancies right now, I have Occultist, which is. The one that's required, sort of. It gives you the most ES that you can get. 40 intelligence, 20% max ES, and then it gives you 1% ES regen per second, which is huge. Um, and then I also have Juggernaut, since I am since I literally just stand there and take hits, this 10% chance to gain endurance charge when hit is basically means that I get full endurance charges a lot, and I'm using an Immortal Call setup, so that means I have a relatively high Immortal Call, and if I want to gain that stun immunity, you can't be stunned when at maximum endurance charges, which is nice for any CI build, right? You just drop the Immortal Call and you put Enduring Cry in so you can maintain full endurance charges without losing the Immortal Call. Or sorry, the Endurances. That way you have stun immunity and about, what, 12% of his mitigation from three Endurances? You can get more under tree if you want, but I opted for jewels instead. Um, but those are the sentency options. You, other options, you can take Guardian for more block and curse and elemental status ailment removal, which is pretty nice. Or you can do um, Gladiator if you want to go for a block-based version. Get 30% of your block applied to spells. Uh, I think that Trickster's recovery rate of whatever, oh, if you've killed recently, recovery rate of energy shield, I believe that scales the um, regen, which is all we're going for is regen. Pathfinder's kind of nice too, but you, like, you don't kill fast enough to gain much benefit from the flash charges gain, so it doesn't really help. The other thing is that's nice is Inquisitor, because a bunch of elemental damage, reduce elemental damage taken while on consecrated ground, increase critical strike chance against enemies affected by elemental status ailments, which is pretty huge because we're using um, elemental overload, 40% more elemental damage. Um, it also lets you do 20% chance to create consecrated ground on kill. Consecrated ground is a buff that drop that gives you I think 4% more regen. Here, let's check. Yeah, so I gain about 800 regen per second if I drop Consecrated Ground, which is pretty nice. That'll go up as you get more ES as well. So that's a good option as well. Um, you could possibly go Berserker as well, but I like these current setups for what I have doing. So for the skill tree, you start a Scion. You go out through the life regeneration nodes, and I'll explain that. Actually, I can just do that now. We're using Zealot's Oath. So, basically our tree is all energy shield, life regeneration, and a couple damage nodes. Mostly regen and ES though. So you're basically picking up all the life regen on the tree. So you come out through here, get a jewel socket, pick up life regen, go over here, pick up more ES, and then head up towards Volpac. Oh, sorry, not Volpac, my bad. Chaos Inoculation, so you can go CI almost immediately. Then you pick up these guys for the more maximum energy shield. And then you just start filling out as much ES as you want. These are efficient. These are efficient if you use a energy from within jewel. 
to convert all of the life on this. Here, let me take this out. So it converts that maximum life into maximum ES, which gives you a good chunk of ES. 16%, 8%, 8%. Those are huge nodes. Come down here, pick up some damage over time, and life regen, mostly for the life regen. That's a lot of life regen. 2% for 3 points is pretty good. Come down here, get some spell damage, and then get maximum energy shield, all res. Spell damage. Go over here, pick up more energy shield, more energy shield from which start, and more energy shield. <laughs> you noticing a trend here yet? Come back down here, fill those out, go up here, and then you're using another energy from within here to convert this life regeneration node into energy into energy shield. So it's six percent max life, four percent, four percent, and then you convert it into energy shield, so you get. 6% max energy shield, 4%, 4%, which is not terribly efficient, but it also has 0.8% life regen, which is why we took it. Um, you come up here, pick up Elemental Overload. This is one of the like very few damage nodes on the tree. 40% more elemental damage if you crit in the past 8 seconds. You generally are just spamming out spells with all your casting damage taken, so this is up almost all the time. And that scales a huge amount of our spell damage. And then you pick up these guys for more ES and a little bit of max lightning res, which is nice. I actually went dual curse with this build, so I have the curse effect and extra curse, so I have two curses. We'll go over which ones I'm using later. And then you come down and get Zealot's Oath. This converts all the life regeneration on your tree and on your gear, and from Consecration to, or sorry, Consecrated Ground into Energy Shield Regen, which is the entire basis of the build. Come down here, pick up some more spell damage, some more ES and all res, more jewel sockets, elemental damage. More ES, more life regen, more ES, more life regen. Get some jewel sockets, which I'll go over what I have in them in a second. And then these, this is an ES, or sorry, this is a life regen node that also gives you fire damage. So as you can see, most of my spells are fire damage because of this and this. So like I'm mainly elemental spell damage and then fire damage, so I went for fire damage spells. You come down here, pick up more life regen and more life regen and more life regen, and then another jewel socket. So that's the tree. Um, jewels, all of my jewels are ES, and damage, and area damage, or chaos damage, because I'm using consuming dark to convert my all of my fire damage into chaos damage, which is great. So damage over time, area damage, ES, which is great. Damage, damage over time, ES. Two of the maximum, or sorry, two of the energy from within, so they go 8 to 12% max ES, so you want 12% if possible. Jewel down here, damage over time, critical strike chance of fire, that helps proc the um, elemental overload, and more yes. And I believe that's all the jewel sockets. So, that's the tree, that's the points and stuff. Let's go over gear. Um, basically you want stupidly high ES gear, and resist, and intelligence if you can get it as well, because that gives more yes. So I'm using a 6 leaf ball galia with 817 ES. This could go up to like 979 if it was perfect. Not in this current chest, but ES chests in general. You can go up to 900. So if I take this off, I lose 7k ES, if that tells you anything. So if you get another 100 ES on this, I could probably get 8k ES from my chest. Just my chest, which is insane. Helm, same thing. Bunch of ES and resists. This, I think you can get up to 550 ES on a helm, so that's that would be ideal. If I take this off, I lose just over 5k ES. Oh, and my discipline. So that's bad. Um, shield, same thing. You want as much ES as you can get. I have the reduced damage taken over time Leo mod crafted on, which goes up to 20%, but I couldn't get much higher. I think this is a pretty good shield for me. Ideally, you can get up to 600 ES or more with... Um, reduce damage taken from damage over time, and more resist would be nice, but this is good. Uh, necklace, you can use a Talisman, Primal Skull Talisman for 2% life regen, or you can use a Shaper's Seed, which also gives 2% life regen, but it doesn't give you the, uh, like I have a maximum energy shield mods on this, and some stats, which I needed a little bit, so this gives me a good amount of ES. And it also, I needed the decks for temp chains. So that's that. Uh, Chavron's Revelation, you don't need this, but it gives you 3% regen of ES per second. You can just use a, another ES ring if you want to get a slightly more ES, but this is a good amount. 3% regen for a, for a ring socket is great. 
you do lose all of your mana regen, which is why I had this for a while, because every time you take a hit, you gain mana with that corruption, which is nice if you want to actually cast things, but I reserve most of my mana for auras. Um, other ring, you basically want a stat stick with ES and resist. Your gloves, you want max ES resist. I think you can get up to 300 ES gloves. Belt, same thing. ES resist, more armor would be nice on a belt and more ES would be pretty good too. You can also alternatively use an Oxium if you want chill and freeze immunity. Well, chill and freeze damage that's based off of your ES. I think I have one here to show you. Maybe. I should have had this ready, I'm sorry. I don't know where I put it. Maybe it's over here. Ah. Okay, it's going. Well, it's basically a unique bell that gives you freeze immunity or freeze and chill chances based off your ES instead of life, which is huge for us. If you don't need the resist on your belt, you can use that. It also gives up to like 70 max ES. Um, boots, you want max ES and resist. Movement speed would be really nice, but I didn't get one, so I just have these. Uh, let's go for best over best in slot and chance. Fireball chance to ignite is okay. Um, I think ideally you want like. Enfeeble Curse Effectiveness, or Minus Mana Reservation on Discipline, or Vitality, or like Purity of Fire, one of those two. Those are three ores I'm using. Go over gems in a second. But I think Curse Effectiveness, or that, or some damage mod like Firestorm Damage, or Flame Surge Damage, something like that. Molten Shell Damage, I don't know. All of those would be nice. Uh, Glove Enchant, this is the best in slot. Commandment of Light is over here. It deals a portion of your main hand damage in the area around you and creates consecrated ground every time that you take a crit and it causes you and your allies to regenerate life. This is 4% max regen per second, max life regen per second every time you take a crit, which is hard to display in here, but it basically does this every time you take a crit. So if you're getting hit by a bunch of stuff, one of them's gonna crit, it's gonna drop consecrated ground, you're gonna regen even more, even faster, which is amazing. Um, this is a merciless version of the correct enchant. The best in slot is 2% from Uber Lab. 2% life mana regen if you're hit recently. Recently is the last 4 seconds. So that gives you another 2% life regen. Pretty solid stuff. Okay. Um, weapon, I'm using a consuming dark because I, because I have fire damage on my tree. This allows me to can get a bunch of extra fire damage and then convert half of it to chaos damage, and then my chaos damage poisons enemies. So this kind of lets you double dip on your fire damage and your elemental damage um, and your area damage because it also scales the poison damage. And because you're hitting with so many different spells that all give a stack of poison based on how much damage they deal, this lets you like kill everything pretty quickly. This is a legacy version. The non-legacy is 30% fire damage converted to chaos, which is still enough to poison stuff to death as well as helping you get some global crit to scale your elemental overload better, not scale, proc it better. And then it gives you plus one to socketed fire gems, so I have a magma orb and a fireball in here that are level 20. And then I have a 21 castle damage taken, so I can use two level 21 gems effectively. So this is pretty nice. All around, pretty good. It gives you a little bit of intelligence as well, which scales your ES. So that's the weapon. Flasks. Um, you basically need your um, elemental immunities, because you don't have any removal other than that. So I have burning immunity, bleeding immunity, freeze and chill immunity, curse immunity, and then I have block roomies for the extra physical mitigation, because we have 25% block here. And then when we use roomies, we go up to 53% and 10% spell block, which is pretty good for physical mitigation, not much for elemental. If we had a better rolled one, we could get more spell block, I think up to 15%, yeah. Uh, but using a fire flask, consecrated ground flask for more um, regen if I need it, a sapphire flask and a basalt for more fizz mitigation, and then this is also a huge amount of fizz mitigation. So let's start with the gem links. Auras, I'm using purity of fire, vitality, discipline, purity of fire to overcap my fire res against like Reflect is actually kind of nice because it helps trigger your custom damage taken. Um, but I'm using this mostly for PvP against Juggernaut Dischargers and stuff. 
Vitality gives you 1.65% life regen per second, which is one of the things we want on this build, so we use it. And then Discipline gives you a huge chunk of ES. If you don't want to use Purity of Fire, because you don't need it for PvP or whatever, and you want to actually have mana, you can put a level 4 in power in this slot with the Enlighten. That way you have a level 23 Vitality and a level 23 Discipline, or 22, sorry, if you have a level 3 in power. Level 4, you get 23s. So that's pretty solid. But I'm using Purity of Fire, because PvP reasons, and I don't cast anything, so I don't need it. <laughs> Let me get my Purity of Fire back on. Alright. Um, other gems. Since we are dual curse, we are using a curse casting damage take in feeble temp chain setup. This is purely for defensive purposes. If you want offensive purposes, you can switch this out for vulnerability, which scales your poison immensely, and then you can switch this out for elemental weakness, which would scale how much fire damage they take, which also scales how much poison damage they take. So that would double dip effectively. But for PvP, I'm using in feeble temp chains. Um, another cast of damage taken setup, Essence Drain, Controlled Destruction, and Flame Surge. Since Flame Surge can't ignite, so you don't need the crit chance, then Controlled Destruction is just the best in slot for spell damage. So it scales this, which is a big chunk of chaos damage. Let me get the Essence Drain up here. This one. So that's 4k chaos per second, and 900 to 1.5k initial hit. So. That hit poisons, and then it also deals chaos per second, which is pretty big. And then Flame Surge is about 50-50 fire chaos, which is pretty good. 3k average damage that also poisons. Um, another cast of damage taken setup that is pretty defensive is the Immortal Call, which generates charges from your Juggernaut Ascendancy, if you've forgotten. 10% chance to gain endurance charge when you are hit. So... That procs pretty often, gives you some fizz immunity, and then frost walls, defensive, you don't need that there. You can put another offensive spell in there, or utility spell, contagion's usually in there for me. Sometimes in PvP I'll put in frost wall, or I'll put in frost bomb for 75% reduced life regen rate against players, that's pretty strong. But generally I just leave contagion in there. Then the last link in there is flame dash, because it's fire damage, area damage, and damage over time which is everything that we want. So it blinks you on top of your targets, puts you closer to them every time you take whatever this amount of damage is, and then you're closer to targets so you take more damage, which triggers more cast of damage taken. And this is the Consuming Dark links because it gives plus one of fire gems. We have level 21 cast of damage taken, and then two 20s, Magma Orb and Fireball. Both deal a pretty big chunk of fire damage. Let's get the Magma Orb damage here. About 3k as well, same as the Flame Surge. This poisons, bounces three times, so it hits three times, three lines, basically. And then Fireball deals a good amount of fire and chaos, and has 70% chance to ignite. Because of my helm and shit, and because it's a quality version. So it's got 50% because of the quality, and then base, and then 20% from this. So it ignites pretty much 70% of the time, which is pretty good. And then for the main six link, this is an interesting six link here. We have Castle Damage Taken level 21. We have Molten Shell. We have a Vortex. Vortex deals cold damage, but damage over time as well, so we scale it. And then Firestorm, which is fire damage, and it hits a lot, so it adds a bunch of poison stacks, right? We have Control Destruction and Contic Effect for the most damage on those three skills. So Firestorm, Molten Shell, and Vortex. Vortex does. About 4k average damage and almost 5.8k cold damage per second, which is a good amount of damage over time. It's a relatively small AoE because we don't have much AoE spec, it's like this big or so. But because you have flame dash capture damage taken, you blink on top of them and then your vortex spawns on top of them and then they die. Your molten shell does 22k average damage, half of which is chaos, so that's a huge poison stack. It also gives you some additional armor, which is nice. And then firestorm. 2k every damage per impact, it lasts 2 seconds, and there's an impact every 0.1 seconds, so that's 20 impacts in a relatively small AoE. So this is really really good for adding damage, and the more they hit you, the more these proc, and they stack up on top of somebody, and it just burns them to death, and poisons them to death. If you're not getting hit by physical damage, you can take out Molten Shell, 
and add in a increased duration, which scales the time on Firestorm and Vortex. So Vortex now lasts 5.22 seconds versus 3 seconds. And Firestorm lasts 2 seconds versus 3.48 seconds. So basically it does 1.5 times duration, which means you get 1.5 times the DPS out of them. Or not DPS, damage over time out of them. Um, if you don't like Vortex and you just want to keep using your Poison Fire Damage stacks, you can drop Elemental Focus in here. You don't really care about the Ignites that much anyway, because it's half of its Poison... Sorry, half of its Chaos, and Ignite doesn't stack like Poison does. You can only have one Ignite active on somebody at a time, and it just uses the highest burn damage that you get out of this, so... Whatever the highest average damage thing in this is, one of those will Ignite occasionally and it will burn for a little bit of damage. So that's not really important, we don't care about it as much. So if you put an Elemental Focus in there, it gives you an extra, what was that? Over 1k average damage, so that's like 30% more damage or something. Well, I guess I could just read the percent. 49% more Elemental damage <laughs> on Firestorm. This is just pure Firestorm 6 link. If you want to manually cast this, you can drop increased, oh sorry, yeah. Drop this, drop this, and put a level 3 Empower in here, and then Spell Echo. So you can just manually stack Firestorms on people. And if you're not using Period of Fire, you're using an Empower there as well, you'll have enough mana to actually cast it. So that would be great if you want to actually play the game. <laughs> but this is just for AFK tanking things. So, I believe that's all of the gem setups. Let's go into Sarn real quick and see if anybody's in there to, to display the damage. Nah, there's no one here. But that's okay. We'll just go to, I don't know, Dried Lake or something. As you can see, my movement speed is ass. But that's fine. Because I don't use it. I guess you could carry a movement speed flask as well, but that's dumb. So basically, here's your gameplay. You walk into a pack, and you just stand there. There's my Consecrated Ground proc. So up to over 8k regen, did you see that? We'll proc it again here in a second. That's my glove enchant, the Consecrated Ground when you take a crit. Come on, crit me. Something crit me. There we go, did you see the 8.1k for a second? That's your like maximum regen, but generally you're going to be at 4.071. So if I take a crit, I don't know if these stack. I don't know, let's find out. Something crit me, please. Let me take out Flame Dash. Alright. 4.1k. Essence Drain gives you life regen as well. <laughs> Everything's dying before I take enough damage to get a crit. Come on. No? Maybe? Nothing? There's a crit. 8.2k. Okay, so they don't stack. But Essence Drain gives you more life regen per enemies affected as well. So that will give you even more regen per second. So if we go DPS setup, put in Vortex, put in Molten Shell, put in Glacial Cascade. So now we're using Vulnerability Temp Chains, which is the DPS version, not the. F you could also use Elemental Weakness, but those are the two that I have right now that are colored correctly. And you kind of just run around, tank things, stuff dies. Let me slowly make my way over to Vol. You can take pretty big hits because you have 20k ES and very high resist. Like, everything just kind of dies. Caught my Molten Shell with LE Overload up, it's 33k average damage. You're gonna get wrecked by that. Oh yeah, all of those damage numbers I gave earlier were without elemental overload. So there's with elemental overloads, 8k cold per second, 2.6k average damage. Like, it's just, it's very strong for AFKing. <laughs> Sometimes I just leave this character in um, Sarn for funsies. Yeah, you can see the Contagion Essence Strain working for endurance charges because of Juggernaut. Good amount of armor and stuff. Here's with actual flasks coming. 76%. Good block. Good resist. Insane regen. Yeah, you can pretty much just tank whatever the hell you want. Let's go make an insane map because Malachi is hard to get to. 
boop, boop. Let's see. What's what's pretty? Hard? This is a pretty hard map, right? That's probably that's probably pretty hard. Let's just let's just go ahead and do that. I have no idea what these map mods are. I've had this map since Parandis, I think. Maybe even before that. I've always been afraid to run it. Okay, so it's not blood magic, and that's good. Oops. And it's not no regen, so we are good to go. We can run this. Go ahead and put flame dash back in. And feeble just in case, because I'm scared. I believe we're good to go though. So now we just kind of walk through the map. This will probably be a relatively long clear, just so you know. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this, just to show what I can tank. I'll slow it down when I get to the boss and resume commentary.
So yeah, that's what you can tank. I didn't use a single flask. I almost used one, and I had to walk out of a little bit of extra damage because a bunch of the swords spawned on me, but that was basically just entirely AFK. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide video, and I'll see you next time.